All right, that's about half past two. And if everybody takes a seat, you can get in front. We are not biting, at least uh, talking to Robert and Paul. We tried to, we, we had lunch, so it's no problem at all. All right, welcome. Good afternoon and welcome to the 38th Color Lab Convention. Today is Monday, April 18th, 2011, and this is a session different but not difficult. I am Janet Stoible, and your panelists today are Paul Bristow and Hope Robert Hurst. Well, the theme for this convention is uh, that's entertaining. And I think part of entertaining is exactly that we not make it difficult for the dancers, but to make it different, interesting, different, but not difficult. That's one of part of our jobs and um, um, information, actually, says that this panel will discuss and demonstrate how to keep dancers interested without making the less than strong miserable. <laughs> we accept squares breaking down as part of modern Western square dancing, but does that mean that difficult choreography is necessary to keep folks coming back? Could it be that the caller's interest in challenging the floor is excessive? The panel will demonstrate how to keep them on their toes and be successful at the same time. We have two very well-known good panelists here. I would like to first start introducing with the person on my right. He comes from England. We all come actually from Europe. This is a Europe panel, European panel. Come from England, West Sussex. He's a member of the Board of Governors and becoming, uh, starting to become a caller coach. Robert Hurst. Please welcome. Big welcome. Um, and on the other side, from Middlesex, England, he's an accredited caller coach and also training director from the Callers Club of Great Br Britain, Paul Bristow. Oh. Right. Okay, we, I would like to start this off with just first talk very shortly about what makes square dance choreography difficult? I'm standing up, it's just maybe easier to stand and do. Think. Because Bill Peters and John Zubalski in AD6 identified 10 factors which make, which make the dancers to perceive square dance as difficult. Factor number one is an easy one. If you call a call which the dancers don't know, it's difficult. They have no chance if you call a chain reaction on a mainstream dance. Mainstream dancers have no chance to dance that. The second one is you, you, if you use a call, which is actually on the list, on the mainstream list, but it's not often used, it's seldom used, it's difficult for the dancers. If the dancers don't know Dixie style because they, callers at home don't use it, it's difficult for the dancers. If you use a call from an unfamiliar formation, it's perceived as difficult. Like, scoot back is used, right, most places. If you use it from a left-hand arrangement, or if you use it from a quarter tag uh, formation, I mean, it's becoming difficult for the dancers. The same thing goes with arrangements. I mean, flutter wheel, I think everybody can dance without any problems if the lady is on the right side, the man is on the left side. Now, if you're going to change this thing, it's getting difficult for the dancers. If you put the man going in, like you know, so this is difficult for the dancers. So an unfamiliar arrangement makes it difficult. If the dancers have to remember too much, if you talk to center dancers do this, the end dancers do that. Or if you say like spin chain through, but the centers trade twice, the very centers trade twice, it's difficult for the dancers. Or the, if you stack calls, if you call too fast for them, if they have to remember too much. You call head square through, right and left through, pass to the center, square through three, left touch a quarter, and you are too much ahead of them. They have to kind of keep going up. It's difficult. And when you work against the dancers, the anticipation, like forward, up, in back, you will pass through with the wheel and deal. That's the, what the dancers do. Forward, up, and back, you will pass through with the wheel around. Getting difficult for the dancers, right? If you, for instance, uh, you have an eight chain through formation, you call dive through, 
Send us California 12. What did most of the dancers do in that moment? Say again. Star through. Why? They would like to work with the dancers in front, not with one beside you. So we work against the anticipation. This makes it difficult for the dancers. If we call bad body flow, most dancers will not recognize that you do not call good flow smooth dance. They just think you're difficult. So, and if you work against the sense of what is the right for the dancers, if you, what is right for the dancers? If the man is on the left side, ladies on the right side, that, that's normal for everybody. If you're a normal couple, that's right for the dancers. If you put them on the other side, if you put them half sashayed, like we are now, they feel uncomfortable. And maybe they want to sashay, change places, if they're too long kept in that position. It's just thing makes difficult. And if we add any of these compounds, if you make a call from an unfamiliar formation and an unfamiliar arrangement, if you add these things, it's difficult. So we need, as callers, to know first what is difficult for the dancers. And important also is that we look at, not at as us as dancers, because for us, we could, most of us, we can dance everything. If you, we like choreography, most of us, I think. So for us, it's not difficult. If you do a pass the ocean from a half sachet arrangement, maybe for the dancers, it is. So we always have to go from the average dancer. Now with that in mind, we can think of how we handle, how, what, what can we do, how we can help dancers, make it easier for them, how we can make them then successful our choreography. And with no further we do, please, Paul, go on. All right. <laughs> Thank you very much. First of all, I must apologize. My voice did not get it through U.S. customs. <laughs> As a consequence of which, I will be talking in a harsh whisper with a British accent. When you obtain the DVD, subtitles will appear along the bottom of the screen, and you might be able to understand what I'm saying. Jeanette spoke briefly about degree of difficulty. That's something which I think is important to understand, but how do we measure it? How do we measure degree of difficulty? What is difficult for one group of dancers may not be difficult for another. It will depend on so many factors, primarily to do with the way they were taught. <clears throat> For example, if you have a static square and you ask that static square to do a square through four hands, my belief is if you were working on a scale of 0 to 10, that you would probably call that a difficulty factor of 1 or 2. It's right at the bottom. It's close to as easy as you can get. If you ask them to do a left square through, you might move up to 3 or 4. If you ask them to do a swing through, heads swing through from a static square, that would probably be a three or four, or heads left swing through would be a five or a six. Where would you put heads left swing through into a left square through? How far up would you go with that? The complexity will change from group to group. There will be a group somewhere who will find that the easiest of them all. And there will be other groups who will find it the most difficult, and they're probably in the majority. We have the need to entertain. The, the theme is entertainment. We want the dancers to enjoy themselves. What's the easiest way to make the dancers enjoy themselves is to call something they've never heard before in such a way that they get it right first time. It sounds so simple. You can make bumper sticker philosophy on these lines. But actually putting it into effect is a different matter. <clears throat> Many years ago, I was discussing this in an open discussion similar to this. And I was explaining how you should take the dancers to the edge of the precipice overlooking certain death and hold them over so they can see the rocks below it got a kind of a mixed reaction. My colleague then said, it's the Kate Winslet effect from Titanic. The caller is Leonardo DiCaprio holding Kate Winslet over the front of the Titanic. And it's true. Now, I know this is not really to do with 
But it's, this, is the, this is the ideology we want. We want to take the dancers out of their comfort zone, expose them to just death, destruction, and something worse. But they must succeed. They must, must, must succeed. You can call anything you want to, providing the dancers do it. So maybe you need to help them a little bit. Maybe you need to give them a little bit of extra information. There are many, many <coughs> examples of this. As you would know, if you have a two-face line, a regular right-handed two-face line, if you call bend the line and then a reverse flutter wheel, it will be relatively easier to do because the flow is good. So wherever possible, make use of the flow, understand the flow. It'll work much better. Let's have the head square through four and touch a quarter and the girls run right and call a reverse flutter wheel. And it will succeed more times than it will fail. Just have two lines of four, call a half sachet and ask for a reverse flutter wheel. It will fail more times than it will succeed. Now we could demonstrate some of these things if you want to. I have no objection to that. But we do have a lot of material to get through. I set myself a task at one stage. Well, actually, that's not true. I set the people I was teaching to call, learning to call, um, the task. I said, you have facing lines of four. I want you to use one call to create an ocean wave. One call. Now, what would the one call be from facing lines of four? Anybody? Step to a wave is one. Another one? Past the ocean is another one. Any more? Dixie style is another one. Half tag is another one. Boys walk, girls dodge is another one. Boys you turn back is another one. Girls you turn back is a, There are 69 that I managed to find. Single calls that you can use to convert from a line to... What's the point of me telling you this? It's different. If it's different, it's exciting because the dancers haven't seen it before. So finding something different is often a case of forcing yourself to think outside of the box. Or so I have discovered many, many things you can do, which could be fun. You extend that analysis of facing lines far enough. If we have boy, boy, girl, girl, for example, where are the head boys? Where are the head girls? Let's have the head boys and the original head girls run right. From certain combinations, you will get that ocean wave again. Now you have to understand a bit more. Now the dancers have to understand a bit more. Now you can have a bit of fun because maybe the first time you call it, they don't succeed. So you just remind them to remember who they are. And the next time you call it, 75% of the floor succeeds. Third time you call it, 100% succeeds. This is my opinion, but in my opinion, if you can get the whole floor through by the third time, it's fun. If it takes one more time, it isn't. But these are only my ideas of how things should work. So you have to think ahead of the box, outside of the box. The other thing that you need to be careful about is cherry picking. Does everybody understand what I mean by that? It's if you go to a dance and you've got a, a fantastic caller, like, for example, Robert Hurst over here, who's got a great bundle of really clever get-outs. He, he does. He does a super job. If you walk away from the dance, take all his clever get-outs and try to use them with your club, they may not work. In fact, they probably won't work because a lot of Robert's material is based upon carefully seeding ideas through the course of a dance to the point where the spectacular get-out works. So you have to be careful to fully understand how the choreography works. You can't just take that fantastic, that wonderful thing. Let's uh, have the setters turn through. Everybody left turn through. Setters turn through. Clover leaf into a right and left grand. It's a fantastic get out. If you know where it starts from, if you've reminded the dancers how to do all of these things, and if you've taken the time to ensure that when you finally use it, 100% of the floor succeed, then it becomes something exciting, enjoyable. It becomes something which is different but not difficult, which is the basis of what we're discussing and talking about today. I'm going to stop at this moment and pass the microphone to Mr. Robert Hurst and ask him to say a few more words, but I hope to come back and perhaps show some of these things to you in just a moment. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. What does different but not difficult mean to me this this is um 
a big difference between, say, calling uh, spin chain next, change the gears from the left-handed wave and expecting people to dance it first time. It won't work. Um, you've got to s start simple and build up to something. Uh, if you don't dance advanced, this will probably mean very little to you, but when people dance at advanced and the call is wheel through, the dancers single clap. And I read an article many years ago by Mr. Ed Foot, who was here this week, who said he always started his advanced dance. The very first call he called was heads wheel through. If the dancers clapped once and he heard one clap, he knew he got a good floor. If it was a ripple, he knew that some dancers had to stop and think about what was required. So that was, that was a help to the caller to help work on the floor and understand the floor he was working with. If you're going to call something unusual, something off the wall, and I know I'm converting to the preacher here, but if you're going to call something, the very important thing is to know that it's a legal and it's going to work. If it doesn't work or is not legal, somebody, probably on the dance floor, will stand still and tell you, in no circumstances, you're wrong, it can't be done. And I've seen it done. It happened to me one night. I was at a call school last year, and the two gentlemen in the front row was at the same call school with me. And... I, one, one of the things that happens at Call School, they get the, all these flashcards, and the, the guy says, right, here's a card, call that move. And he looked at the card, and it was scoop back. And uh, then he said, okay, you know scoop back, do from court attack. So I got static square, past the ocean, scoop back. And um, it didn't work. And one guy said, it doesn't work, can't do it, never seen it before. It is legal, because I did check the definition before I came here today. But it was unusual for many reasons. First of all, the scoop back from the position I just set it up was boy working with girl on a scoop back, which is not very frequently seen. So I said to again, because I wanted this guy to succeed. So I repaired the square and called heads past the ocean, swing through. Uh, shall we sh just make a square, please, and we'll, we'll show it. Please? Yeah? Can we mind? Yeah? yeah. I prefer if we got boys dancing with girls, if you want mine. Stay on which side? Okay, we'll do it. We'll, we'll, we'll work with the sides. Let's have the sides past the ocean. All right. So if I call Scoop back from here, I would have boys working with girls which is unusual, all right? So the second thing I did when I run, wanted to do it again, I had the sides swing through for me. Okay, so now if I call scoop back from here, it's much more normal because the boys will be walking with boys and the girls will be working with girls. However, I can help the, me the dancers even more. I can say before anybody goes anywhere, boys work with boys, girls work with girls, everybody use your right hand, scoop back, and go. And the go command also tells everybody to work together. So everybody's standing still until I issue the go command to help everybody work together and to help everybody succeed. Okay, um, repair your square for me, if you would, please. Um, many callers uh, will teach their dancers modules, and this is one, one of the, the, the Cram's ideas, uh, calling in modules. And even if you, you as a caller do not teach in modules, dancers get to expect certain combinations of modules. Okay, so if I have the head square through four, swing through, I want audience participation in a minute, spin the top, what comes next? Well, they said, 
Well, I was going to call recycle, but never mind, it doesn't matter. You see what I mean? Yeah? So the dancers will anticipate what you're going to call. All right. Square your sets one more time, please. Again, you can help me out, guys. Four ladies chain. Roll away with a half sachet. All right, you, you, you guys are obviously good. A lot of dancers, uh, just, 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 did you want to say on the mic? A lot of dancers would have done another roll, another half sachet and circled, yes? Hey, what, what would happen, at least my dancers, because he said roll away with a half sachet, and some non-English speaking dancer would ignore the wither or would understand roll away, half sachet. They might have done somehow another half sachet. <laughs> okay. So that, that's probably me. However, right, just, just put the girl on your normal side, please. Half sachet. Sorry, hang on. I didn't understand black salt. Sorry, hang on. Half sachet. Half sachet. Half sachet. Half sachet. Half sachet. Yeah, I'm not criticizing. Everything's fine, but I'm just saying. I didn't understand why we went to a squared up set and didn't stay in line. So what, why did we do that? Why did they get you back to a squared up set? Y yeah. Because I didn't want to bother, waste the time resolving oh, the square. Yeah. I just, because we're not here to resolve the square. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, what, what, what I would expect your average dance to have done is after the roll away, to circle left, and then expect another roll away, circle to an Alaman left, and other promenade or right left ground. All right? If okay, so it just goes to a square upside then. Yeah. Because what I wanted to do was this. Four ladies chain. Roll a half sachet. Keep this girl on the wrong side and square your sets. You see the command I'm giving to help the dancers succeed. It's different, but it's legal, it's possible, and from here I can do a grand square. Which is one of my favorite gets out, but that's another, another issue. Um, all right, one, one more little example. Um, okay, let's have the sides lead right. Oh, sorry, I do bug your pardon. Square your sides. All right, all right, let's have the sides lead right, circle to a line. and pass through. Now, once again, you guys are good, and I've set this up for a particular reason, and I'm going to call chase right. Okay? Now, you all know the chase right, because this is from a standard position. You all know how it goes. The right-hand dancer, and again, I checked the de definition. It says it's like a zoom action, but I'll prefer it as the right-hand dancer does a right face, you turn back, and everybody splits, circulate twice. Okay? So, chase right, go. And you all know that. You all dance it all the time, and it works perfectly, yes? Let's have the girls run right. Now, if I chase right, or call a chase right from here, I know you guys are brilliant, you can do it, but again, now we've got the boys on the right-hand side, so the person who does the right face U-turn back is the boy, the fella, and everybody will split circulate twice. Everybody chase right, chase the boy. And the girls are facing out. Perfect. Okay? And everybody's happy with that, yes? Yeah? And again, I'm helping them, everybody out. All right, let's have the girls U-turn back for me. Pass through. Now, I, I, in, a, in the, the, the dance where I call this, I will spend a lot more time working on this. All right? But you guys are good, so you can help me out here. Now, the next bit is very or hard and almost impossible for the fellas. All right? Because I want the fellas to do absolutely nothing. Now, that means standing still, which is contrary to dancing, especially when the music's playing, you're enjoying the music, etc. So... Ha, fellas, you've got the hardest bit of all. You're going to stand still. Girls, I'm going to talk to the ladies, yeah? 
Girls, you've got an offset box. Yeah? In each line, you've got two ladies. The right-hand lady, you can do your right face U-turn back. And everybody in the girls working to the next girl's position, you can do two split circulates. It's a chase right action, yes? Girls working, go. Do your chase right action within your footprints of the girls only. Perfection. Look at that. If, let's have, um, yeah, let's have all the boys run right. And if you're a girl facing out, do you turn back? Just give me a normal line very quickly. Everybody pass through. Now, ladies, you stand exactly where you are. Stand still. Do nothing. It's hard. All right? Fellas, you've got an offset box of fellas' footprints. The right-hand dancer of the fellas, you do a right face U-turn back, and everybody in the fellas just box circulate in that offset box. Two positions. Go. One, two, okay, cool. Some of you cheated a little bit, but I don't worry about that, okay? Okay. Um, if you can legally, California twill. If you didn't do that, can the other girl run? Okay, everybody pass through. Now, again, I will spend a lot more time than I am doing today setting this up and working it through, but... You guys are going to good. You can do this, and it's going to work, isn't it? All right. Trust me, I'm a caller. All right? I'm going to let's talk to the girls first, and this is how I handle it. Talking to the ladies. There's a lady on the right. You can do a right face you turn back, and then all the girls, in your footprints for the girls, you can do a chase right. Yes? It's got two split circulates. Just think where you're going. Ignore the fellas. Okay? Fellas, you've got an offset box. Okay? The right-hand gentleman, you can do the right face, you turn back. And to the fellas, you can, split, you can box circulate in your, your fellas' box, yes, to fellas' footprints. Everybody working. Fellas work with fellas. Girls work with girls. Everybody do your bit. Chase right and go. And look at the success on that. By helping the dancers, by Encourage them by working with them. Encourage them that they can do it and they can succeed. And it will work. It will work. If a dancer hasn't seen something before, it's hard. Standing still, still is very hard or impossible. But the caller can give the hints to make it all work. Thank you, guys. All right, yeah. We have still 45 minutes, so we go around here, show some more examples. Uh, I just would like to remind you, if you have questions or comments, please come. We have a mic here. Um, pass this around. So they, uh, they, you can't use these two because for the being taped, only these two mics work. It's plugged in. That, that's why um, they told us so. So I'd like to ask... Paul first to give maybe some of the examples he talked before about to show it to show it actually. Okay, um, I need a, a square, please. Just notice the way people respond. This happens in England <laughs> as well. I love this. Can we have the young, good-looking, sexy people up this time, please? Oh, well, there we go. Look at that. No problem. Take it as kind of digestion after the meal. <coughs> well, looks like we need. Um, all right. It would be better if we had girls dancing as girls. Nothing, nothing personal, sir. It's 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 just the moustache. It's a bit, you know, it's a step too far. <laughs> okay. Um, these are just some ideas based upon what I was talking about before. Let's have the heads lead right and circle to a line. <coughs> okay, from here, go right and left through. Half sachet. And reverse flutter wheel. And after several attempts of rushing at the same time, 
Eventually the girls worked out they should be in there, which was absolutely marvelous. But it was confusing and could be potentially dangerous. Past the ocean. Swing through. Girls run. Bend the line and reverse flutter wheel. Much less danger now because the girls have got the dynamic taking them into the center. Past the ocean. Girls cross run. You end up between the gentlemen. Girls trade. Girls run. Bend the line and flutter wheel. Again, the dynamic helps the dancers to succeed. There are many things that we can use just to expand and take away from the normal. Pass through. <coughs> Tag the line. Face right. One of the things that we occasionally forget to use are the terms ends and centers. Couples circulate. Ends run. Boys run. Which is an unusual combination, or not one that the dancers will probably have seen too often. Pass through. Tag the line. <coughs> Face left. Couples circulate. Ends run. Girls run. And it's a little unusual. It's a little different, but I don't think it's too difficult. It's different, not difficult. This is obviously what we're aiming for. I want to try and show something now with the three times through. So let's see if I can make it work. In order for it to work, well, you'll see. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Do a double pass through. Put centers in. Cast off one quarter. Ends run. Ends cross run. Your answers, please, on a postcard to the following address. Okay, that would be the first time through, and the floor crashes and burns. Um, and you apologize, because I would. I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have called it like that. My, my fault entirely. Pass through, wheel and deal, and let's see if I can help some more. Double pass through, put centers in. Hang on a second. Cast off one quarter. Now be careful, be careful, because to, tonight, and tonight only, we are going to call the people on the end of the line. The ends. Okay, you may want to write that down. Ends run. Who are the ends now? Ends cross run. Do we have normal facing lines? Yes, we do. It's a little bit of fun. That would be the second time through. You get 75% of the floor to succeed. Third time through, 100%. You can then use it as much as you want because the dancers will think, well, ain't that tough? Nice and easy. I like this. But first time through, it's, it's a destroyer because it's unusual. Past the ocean. <coughs> Single hinge. You can directionally move the dancers around. Centers trade. Center boy run. Same boy cross run. Let's see if he finds out where he knows. It. He ends up between the two girls. Yow. Same boy run. Now these are good dancers. Boys pass through, girls single hinge, boys face in, everybody extend. Good. Centers trade. Recycle. Boys roll. Boys cast three quarters. It's a little unusual. It's a little different. It's not difficult. Boy run. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Forget that. That's impossible. Just wanted to demonstrate what impossible was. Extend, everybody. Then boys run. Sorry about that. Center is half sachet. Boys half sachet and bend the line. Girls cast off three quarters. The flow on that is extremely good, but it's a little unusual, a little difficult. But the flow drives the dancers to do it correctly. Past the ocean. Single hinge. Centers trade. Ends run. Centers trade. Ends run, centers trade, girls run, Dixie style. And again, using the flow of the dancers in order to get the dancers through slightly different and less usual patterns. Left swing through. Left cast off three quarters. Centers trade. 
Boys trade, girls trade, centers trade, boys trade. The dynamic on that is quite comfortable, although it seems to be complicated. And there's a whole bunch of things that you can do. From here, original sides, California twirl. Now, this will only work if they remember. <laughs> and I'm so sorry, but I just wanted to play with that. I do apologize. Bend the line. Pass through. Tag the line. Make sure you're holding hands. Original sides. Run right. Original boys. Run right. And you've got a whole big basket of stuff you can play with all these bits and pieces. Okay, from here, star through, <coughs> pass through, bend the line, pass through, wheel and deal, and the centers go home. Because I can't remember where they started. I do apologize. Um, but that was just a few of my additional bits and pieces. I think I covered everything I mentioned before, if, if I'm right. If not, I, I apologize. But thank you very much, dancers. That was good. Uh um, I would like to have, if possible, four girls up here for a moment, <laughs> just to show something else as a helping tool. I just need, say, on the head position spot, four girls, as couples, yeah. One thing, when you want to help dancers to learn also, for instance, the other positions in an arrangement, like in a past the ocean, you know, the normal way to dance it is the man is on the left side, the lady is on the right side, it's 100% success. If you would just do it the other way around, the success rate would be very low. So a way to start doing it is working with same-sex couples. If we do a pass the ocean from here, for which girls, for which two girls, it's normal. Okay. So they will drag, kind of, the other girl around because they know exactly where they have to go, to go pass the ocean. The others will manage it because the two of four are safe, are sure. Same thing goes for recycle. For which girls, girls, it feels normal. The inside center girls, they will kind of help the other girls around recycle. Okay. Thank you very much. So this is also things you can say thank you, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's a hel helping way of introducing the different positions without making anybody feel miserable because you want to let them feel happy about it. and if two or four know exactly where to go the other two know also might be a helping way and another thing which might help if for instance you call uh, let you have a line and you want you want the dancers to work on wheel around so if you'd call this pass through wheel around you would have a very limited success so first of all, we do it on other arrangements first. You like to do a wheel and deal, centers wheel around, which, which flows very well. And later on, you give the dancers more lead time. So you don't say, like normally you'd say, pass through and a wheel and deal. You give them, but if you want the wheel around, you say, pass through, wheel around. You, you emphasis on this. You give them more time to do the call. As another example, if you have a double pass through formation, and you want, you want the left touch a quarter after the center squares through three. Can I have a square for that? I think you need a square two afterwards. Yeah, okay. Can you, we need a square again. Sorry. <laughs> it's a little exercise getting up, getting down, getting up, getting down, getting up. Thank you very much. And give a big hand to dancers, all the dancers who come and, and help there. <laughs> and it's very difficult to demonstrate any choreography without, um, without dancers. Oh, we just need... All oh, right. Okay. Heads, star through. So what normally, if, you, if I call a square through three, most often what comes afterwards, element left. Or maybe those at all, but square through three. And I say now, do a left touch a quarter. I say it much, much earlier than I would do another call. Okay? Which helps the dancers to get through it. Go, can you go back before the square through three? I love these dances. Can I take you back home? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Square through three. Left touch a quarter. 
Okay, they can handle it, but normally that way you would lose lots of dancers because they are not prepared for it. Go once again back to the before square through three. <laughs> we can even make it better. We can help them with help of it. Square through three. The others get the left hand ready. Everybody do a left touch a quarter. Uh, these are ways to help the dancers for success. For, given, for instance, give more lead time. So the dancers have more time to prepare for unusual choreography. And I pass it on to Robert. You have got some ideas? Regroup. <laughs> One comment I want to make just before um, we, we dance a little bit is um, Paul alluded to that the, you, you got if you got like we, you get 10% success, 100% success. Bill Peters um, did an exercise which I've, I've, I know Jeanette's seen before as well. That Bill Peters used to say, if I give you a series of sequences. How many, if you've got 10 squares on the floor, how many squares will be standing and still be with you after I've called the sequence? And if you've not got a 100% success, if you've not got 10 squares still dancing with you, then you've got some degree of difficulty. If you've got nobody dancing with you after the, what your sequence is, you've got problems. And as a caller, you, you should be able to think about these things before you actually decide to go and, and call some stuff. Um, so if you've got a, a module in mind or something, um, think about it and before you actually call it, say, w w will my dancer's success be 100% or am I going to lose some people? If you're going to lose some people, if you think you're going to lose some people, you need to help them. Um, Paul did some interesting choreography there. Um, the, the one thing I want to comment on what, what Paul's done and what I'm going to come allude to in a minute is there is a fine line between what you call uh, something different and something which is a gimmick. Okay, because gimmicks can help you if they work, but if they cause dancer failure, then the dancer will resent it rather than you, th you think you've done something flash. Uh, what Paul did, he, he, he's a master of this, so he knows how to do it, and, and he, he will make sure the dancers succeed uh, on what he's doing. But some callers will say, I want to do this, this, and this, and um, not give you any help. All right, let me, let me just explain it a little bit. Um, let's have the sides lead right and circle to a line. Pass through. Everybody half sashay. Now, I want to set this up like that because um, I, I would actually play around to get, get you to this position or this state or sequence or however you want, want to call it. Now, if I wanted to call a gimmick, I would call boys chase right and roll, girls chase left and roll. And that to me is a gimmick. All right? I, I will say from here though, fellas, I want you to chase right. So it's a right, fa right face, you turn back and you want to roll at the end. So it's a split circle twice and then roll at the end of it, okay? Girls, I'm going to ask you to left chase. So you're going to do a left, you, left, you turn back, split circulate twice, and roll at the end of it. Be careful who you crash into. Everybody, your parts go. Look for your partner, right and left grand. Square your I'll show you one more time. It's, an, it's, it's a neat get out, this is. But you have to understand what it does. Don't please, don't, you can take away these and use them by all means, but understand them before you try and use them. Heads lead right, circle to a line for me. Everybody, half sachet, pass through. All right, so I had a, a zero line and did it made it into a half session and everybody passed through. All right, let's think, talk to the fellas. Fellas, you're going to do a chase right. So you're going to stay in your split box. There's the clue. Stay in your split box and chase right. At the end of the chase right, you're going to roll. Okay? Ladies, girls, you're going to do a left chase. So it's a left U turn back. Stay in your split box, split circulate twice, roll at the end of it. Okay? Everybody do your parts. Go. Look for your partner, right and left grand. Okay? Okay, and it works. 
But to me, that's the difference between getting dancers to succeed and you trying to be clever as a caller and offering a gimmick which the dancers may not succeed at. Can I say one more thing, other thing? The other thing is, uh, finally, from me, and I will shut up then, is that if you're again, if you're going to try some of these strange things, and, and they're fun, believe me, but what you also need to do is, especially for the fellas, callers, make sure these things not only work, but also flow nicely, not only for you, but for all the ladies as well. This is important. Please, but please come and use the microphone. I'm Stephen Cole for the tape from Renton, Washington. The question I would have is how would you work that into your choreography? You're not going to call that cold. So you would want to work it into your choreography someplace where the men are doing one thing for a while and the ladies do something else. Would you actually work the chase left for a while and that would be the last big get out of the night? Or would that be something you would just kind of work through a whole tip? No, I would be, that would be the last big get out. Of the night. And I would only use it as the last big get out of the night if the dancers succeeded as I built up to it throughout the night. It's again, it's the call of judgment thing. Uh, we have actually another, well, close to 25 minutes. First thing after the um, session, please pick up handouts. We have handouts here in front for pickup. And now I think we have a lot of callers here who might have also some ideas or questions. So actually, I walk around with the mic. I'll start over here, come then to you. If you have also ideas how to, uh, we might need you for demonstration purposes. <laughs> Sorry, thank you very much. Okay, state name and where you're from. I'm Arlen Miller from Los Angeles. The question I have in my mind is, how much is too much? How much is not enough? I think the answer to that goes back to Kate Winslet on the front of the Titanic. <laughs> don't drink, oh yeah, but don't drop her in the water. She didn't, she didn't blame Leonardo DiCaprio for the Titanic sinking, but she would have blamed him if he dropped her in the water. To be absolutely fair, there's no way of knowing. You have to do it piece by piece, very carefully, take it through. You want to keep the dancers excited, but you don't want to destroy the floor. On some occasions, you can build up to a very high level of excitement with a few, few simple alterations from what you normally use. Some floors, you've got to get really, really clever before they start to get interested. But it will change floor by floor, tip by tip, square by square even. It's very difficult. The only thing I would always recommend any caller does is to use your eyes, watch the dancers, and try and find that correct level. But other than that, I cannot give you a formula or an answer. I'm, I'm sorry it's not really the answer to your question, but really the answer is there is no answer to that. You've got to make your single most important requirement of any caller is judgment. That will dictate whether you fail or succeed. Judgment, judgment, judgment. Get it right, you're a hero. Get it wrong, you're something other than a hero. And I'm afraid that's just a lot of hard work, a lot of experimentation, but a lot of great care of the primary goal, which is the dancers must succeed. Every time the dancers must succeed. If they walk out of there with a smile on their face singing the last song, you've done it right. But I can't tell you how to get there. And I wish I could. Just as an organization thing, can we do the handout after? <laughs> because everybody walks in front here and somehow I think it distracts a little. I apologize for that. Uh, you have a comment because you have laid another question from the floor. Let, let's, you go first. Okay, I'm Lynn Webster from the Twin Cities. My, my suggestion is one of our local callers likes to do DVD Plus, and he, he started teaching half sachet relay the deuces. Well, he was having trouble. Well, what he found out to do is do a girl, girl, boy, boy ocean wave because at least half the dancers are normal and they'll help the rest of the dancers get through it. Exactly. This is the point. If, you have, if it feels normal for some of the dancers, you have a much, much bigger chance to help them through. Also, maybe just as an add-on to that, if it ends normal, if you have a call which might be complicated, like a recycle from left-hand waves, I normally have a lot of success, at least in the area of Germany, even in the summer jamboree. This is right after graduation. So most people are not really uh, kind of introduced to this 
a different formation, also different arrangement. I put the dancers in the left hand, ocean wave with the girls at the end. Let, can you guys just lead somehow? <laughs> Make a left hand ocean wave? If you, I will do it from here. It feels uncomfortable, but it ends normal. So recycle. They'll somehow struggle. But I guess also the not so sure dancers, they will end normal. Either use boy, boy, girl, girl situation as a help, or use ending normal as a help. That's a point. Okay, Robert. I'm going to say on that um, strange chase right, I said, remember I, I got the boys doing the chase right and girls doing the chase left? Well, girls are normally used to doing the chase, so I set them up doing the hard bit, and they succeeded, of course. So again, again, it's, it's what, what dancers are used to. It, it, as Paul said, the, whether what you use uh, on a dance will be very much depending on the floor, on, on the dancers you get there. I mean, I, I call for a, a club and I go, for, go through all sorts of these crazy things in my mind on the way to the club. When I get there, I decide, mm, maybe I'll change my program. So if you, you need a, another thing, you need a plan B. And... Um, but you, you need to get the dancers to succeed. Um, and especially if you're in a situation where you've got really um, experienced dancers who always come down the front and will do everything you tell them, you've got the weaker dancers at the back, you've got, to, you've got to work for the whole floor. So if you, you, if you can come up with something that will level the whole floor that someone has never seen before, which is, n what I would emphasize, it's not a gimmick. Yeah? Um, something that's a little different that everybody can work with and everybody can succeed with, then you'll, you'll get a, a fantastic dance. Um, I'm going to hand the mic over. Just one thing, though. Uh, my, my handout has uh, all gone, unfortunately. The one good news is um, all the handouts will be on the members area of the Call Lab website immediately after convention. So if you didn't go, I want to do apologize, but they will be available immediately after convention. Okay, thanks, Robert. Are there any other questions and comments? Very. We meet halfway in the middle, right? <laughs> Hi, I'm Barry Clasper from uh, Toronto. Um, I'd just like to point out that when we talk about uh, difficulty, uh, it's often presented from the perspective of it's something to be avoided. You know, you don't want to make it hard. Um, I don't think of it that way. In fact, what's difficult for one group is easy for another group. So we're not trying to avoid difficulty. We're trying to manage difficulty. So as callers, we're always trying to judge what the dancers in front of us find uh, easy, what they find a little odd but they can cope with, and what they find hard and what they find impossible. And we're always trying to figure out where that line is. And as Paul was saying, dangle them over the precipice and let them see the rocks, but don't let them fall. So think of it more in terms of you're managing the level of difficulty all the time as you're calling. You're not trying to avoid it, but that means you need to know, as everybody's been explaining, what is difficult and why it's difficult and what is easy and why is it easy. Thank you. Barry? More, Betsy? Betsy Gata from New Jersey. Different can be as simple, and I've had a, a lot of good luck with this particular get out to an at home ending. If you have a double pass through position and the center couples are like one quarter off from home, centers join hands and circle right one, one quarter and back away. It's very simple. About 50% of the time, they'll go left anyway. And, and you go, they, I say, and you're home. And they go, no, and I went the other right. But it's not so much a gimmick. They realize that they just went the other. If I have them circle left, it succeeds 100%. Circle right, a little bit different. Thank you, Betsy. Some more questions, ideas? Good, interesting variations. Different or difficult? Elmer Claycomb from Custer, South Dakota. I've come to these different, not difficult sessions year after year, and 
I don't think we ever get to the point of what it should be. <laughs> Different can be and should be the fact that use different setups at the beginning. Don't just square through four. You know, you get a beginning that there's a whole bunch of things, very simple, but it's just a little bit different instead of using the same thing. Okay, everybody knows how to do all this difficult choreography and how to make it different, which really makes it more difficult for the average dancer. Then you get out. Well, it doesn't have to be a difficult get out to the alum and left. It can be the fact that you get out to an alum and left, go alum and dar, instead of going alum and left, right and left grand. I really come to these things looking for some ideas that will work with people without challenging their minds that are just fun. You know, Betty said, just circle in the middle. Those are some of the ideas we really need to share and, and help each other with them instead of uh, all the things you guys did are great, but they're bordering on difficult and getting over the precipice. Let's just get some things that are different that people can enjoy, and you know dang good and well they're going to make it and kind of chuckle about it when they're done. Help me. <laughs> Thanks, Elma. Uh, let me, just as a comment on it, I think what we all have to do to make it different, in my opinion, is to go ahead and we have, you all, who, uh, who knows the call analysis sheet Call Lab has put out? Well, you guys know it? Yeah. It's a sheet actually where you put the definition on and then you put possible starting formation on, possible ending formation, the flow of the call, you, how the, the hands availability are, and, and all these things you have to analyze the call and then for yourself actually take a mainstream list and think what you can do, what, what other calls you can use before and after. And the more you think about these different ways of using a call, the more different you're going to make your own choreography. One of the things I also think is a very good thing is to kind of as a self-improvement, it takes time to listen to your own calling. I mean, you, you tape two hours and you listen for at least four to six hours and then try to find out what you keep doing over and over again and then how you can change it. I think this is also ways to get out of ideas or go to other dead callers and listen to their ideas. But, but you're right. It's, it's a fine line. Like the, the, I like this Titanic thing, even if it's... <laughs> um, yeah. the, kind of, you, the dancers like to have, have a little have a little challenging, but the most, most important thing is that they can succeed, and they succeed to 100%, so they have fun with it. So we need to keep that also as tools in mind. We can make it different. The difficulty has always to be succeedable. I'm thinking around one of the points that was made just a second ago about the, the overuse of a head square through four to start off um, the, the figure. And it's a good point. It's something which I, I try to encourage people who come to taller schools that I run not to use square through four, but to find something else. Um, one of the ones I personally enjoy using is to have the heads pass through and promenade halfway, which achieves absolutely nothing, but it's different. But you can then have the heads pass through and promenade three quarters whilst you get the sides to do something. New ways, different ways of starting off the choreography, which are going to be 100% successful. And I hope these are in line with the ideas that you were thinking of. This sort of thing, which is almost silly simple, but is interesting. Not because it's in any way difficult, but just because it's different, 100% different. Robert was talking earlier on about the fact that we use... Call combinations dancers can predict. For a long time, I used to use a little routine at some stage during a dance where I'd call head square through, and I'd say, how many heads? And they'd shout out, four. And I'd say, do a do -si, and they'd shout out, do. And I'd call swing, and they'd say, through. And I'd say, boys, and they'd say, run. And I'd say, couples, and they'd say, circulate. And I'd say, bender, and they'd say, line. And I'd say, pass the, 
and they'd say ocean, and I'd say all eight, and they'd say circulate, and I'd say re, and they'd say cycle, and I'd say veer, and they'd say left, and I'd say ferris, and they'd say wheel, and I'd say zoom, and they'd say nothing. It's just a bit of fun, and not particularly complicated stuff, but the only reason any of it works is because we are f so formulaic. You analyze that, the square through four and the do -si do yeah, and maybe the swing through. But after that, the boys, they could have traded, run, cross run, circulated. The whole thing should die on the third or fourth call. But it doesn't. The dancers see a little bit of fun out of it. And that is, that is a gimmick rather than um, a, a true choreographic device. But it's a bit of fun um, rather than different. Uh, rather than difficult, it is different because it's fun. But it's not necessarily something you could do more than once in an evening. And probably not at every dance you call for that group. <laughs> But these are just some little ideas that bounce into my head. There are a lot of combinations of bits and pieces. I watch this all the time when I'm calling things which should work and could work. And I try and find ways to make them work by using the flow element. Um, if we could get a square on the floor again, I'll just show you one last idea that I have in my head. It's the same youngsters each time. Do you notice that? This is something which I saw and I wasn't sure about. And it went something like this. Head star through, pass through, and put centers in. Now we have an inverted line. And it occurred to me from here I could have the boys run to get a two-face line, which I can. But the flow isn't very good. But if I put anything, either a single hinge or a cast three quarters before it, then the flow will work. Cast off three quarters. Boys run. Couples circulate. Now it's just a simple extension. I found it to be 100% successful. The dancers don't actually realize it's anything different because it's so easy. Bend the line. Pass through. Tag the line. Boys as a couple promenade three quarters. Now these are extremely good dancers because my experience is half the floor will have the boys promenade the wrong way or not go three quarters. Um, um. Girls promenade three quarters. And as you can see, you're just playing little games with a call which gets the, le the greatest resistance from the dancers. How many times do you call promenade and the dancers take two steps and stop? In Europe, we have a thing called the burp. Have you heard of burp? We have backup reverse promenade. The dancers promenade backwards two steps to avoid going all the way around. B-U-R-P. I don't know who invented that, but I, I kind of like the idea. But I see it a lot. So promenade is a thing you can use. And the important thing is for people to understand how it works. Centers pass through. Put centers in. Cast off three quarters. Boys pass through. Boys cross run. I'm just playing now because I'm enjoying it. Girls run. Did you notice the, 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 the brain going in there? In some places where you call, cross run will be very, very, very difficult for people, especially the shoulder passing aspect when they're facing the same way. And the, the discussion between the dancers on that can give you problems you don't need. Pass the ocean. Centers run. Centers trade. Ends run. Centers trade. Girls run. Past the ocean. And you can go on for hours with combinatory calls that don't actually achieve a great deal, but make the dancers think, this is a little different. This is just a little strange. I just thought I'd show you a few more of these little different little strange ideas. Boys run. Ferris wheel. Center sweep a quarter. Everybody point at your home position. Go there. <laughs> and that, in case you're not sure, is a gimmick, which upon occasion I do use in all seriousness if I manage to lose the memory as to who dares where. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time.
stay there, stay there, we'll stay there. Would you mind stay there? Um, Elmer, wasn't it? Yeah, is it Elmer? Yeah. Um, I'll, Head square through is, 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 is hang on, no, no, don't get it. Head square through is obviously a common o, o, opener. Um, it's also actually for a newer dancer, it's, it's a safety blanket. They know that. They know that if that's the start of a scene called figure, they know they can do it and they're going to succeed. So sometimes it's useful to do it. Um, obviously, I mean, again, at caller schools and so on, uh, they do um, equivalents. Um, so what's the equivalent of a square through four? Um, <coughs> Uh, a common one is uh, like if one did the head square through, so I could have the heads touch a quarter and the boy run. Yeah, do that for me then. Yeah, and that's a perfect equivalent. Okay, um, heads quartering back away and you should be home. Yeah, right. So on the similar theme but slightly different, and this this is therefore different. Let's have the sides left touch a quarter, and the girl run left. It's exactly the same equivalent, but it's a little different. Yeah? Okay. Thanks, guys. All right. Thanks, Robert. Do we have some more? We had one more comment, I think, from down there, right? Or one more question. Do we have questions? Okay. We have, we have still five minutes for some questions, some ideas, some comments. Or Okay. I'm on my way. Thank you. Mike Callahan from New York. One of the things you don't hear too much is more, you, you hear the head square through, but you don't hear head men take your corner, go up to the middle and back and do something. And one of the little openers that I use, I have the head men take your corner, go up to the middle and back, box the mat, right and left through, half sachet, right and left grand. And that's a nice little thing that, that works out pretty good. It's not too hard. A little bit harder is head men in the corner go up to the middle and back. Same for square through four. Meet your partner right and left grand. So they're going around the diff different way. But those are two little openers that, you know, if you can do things with head men in the corner or side men in the corner, it's a little different. But it's not too difficult if you can work it out. Thank you, Mike. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, Hal Barnes from Bowie, Maryland. Um, and I'm also addressing Elmer's point. One of the great sources of, of relatively simple but new stuff is your own brain, but you got to get it knocked out of its normal rut. We have so many cliches in square dancing. And what does it mean? Swing through and the men run, okay? You know, touch a quarter, scoot back. Uh, and the men run. Touch a quarter, circulate, and the men run. I mean, you swing through, spin the top, and a right and a left through. You can list all these cliches. Now, you got to get your brain out of the normal mode. So say, okay, in this tip, I'm, I'm going to do swing throughs, but I'm going to do everything except men run, okay? Or something I've had some new callers do is say, let's brainstorm. How many things can you do after a swing through beside that are not men run? Well, men circulate. And then the ideas start to flowing. If you accept a constraint, like on a theme, accept a constraint on your calling that say, I'm going to do this whole tip. I'm going to do swing through, but I will not do a single men run. Suddenly, a normal path that your brain tries to go down is blocked, and your brain will generate all these great new ideas, and it's all because you blocked a path and forced it into that thing there. And they, some, most of them won't be terribly complicated. They'll just be different. And you can pick any cliche and say that. I'm going to do a touch a quarter and circulate, but I will not do a man run after that. And suddenly it's everybody trade and roll. It's centers walk and dodge. It's, it's all this stuff, but it comes right out of your own brain, and it's not that hard. Thanks. <clears throat> I think one of also important is the whole thing that you program your evening. And that gives you also this, okay, this time I'm doing, I'm working on recycle, or working, I mean, I'm using recycle as a theme or as an idea. And if you do that at home, you keep thinking on, on ideas, how to get there, how to get in, how to get out. And with thinking about choreography, thinking about writing modules, you make your dance different than it was before. I think we have time for one more comment. So yeah, okay. Come up here, it might be easier. 
Actually, my comment, I'm Steve Anderson from North Carolina. I was going to say that what you guys are doing here, though, you had mentioned modules just now. Uh, you're running these guys around, and you're just kind of site calling. Is that – am I not correct with that? So you have to know who your heads and sides are, or basically half of them, in order to do what you're doing. So if you're not a good site caller, <laughs> either become a good site caller or you don't use this type of stuff. Or, I mean, how is that fitting in with, you know, working modules and stuff like that? I guess that's my question. I mean, I would think, as I know Paul also from working with me, that he has a lot – of homework invested in that, that he can see that things. I mean, the way you normally do is to work out modules. Either you do full modules from like a zero box to whatever, to a get out, or to a zero box to a zero line, kind of module calling, or they have smaller modules, like an idea, like having, I like to use a Dixie style door wave, boys single hinge, center boys straight, cast of three quarters. I know this works from a normal arrangement. These kind of modules you can write down also. It doesn't have to be really a module from phaser to phaser. But you need a module which you know it works. Because if you just try to do this with side calling, in my opinion, what happens is you depend on the dancers. And you have to look at the dancers to know where they are. And this should not happen. We have to do all our, our, our homework. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have to work these things at home to, be, to become creative, to become making difference. So mo writing modules is maybe the best thing. Writing big modules or just small flow modules from a facing line to a facing line, normal arrangement to normal arrangement. Is this Can concern? I comment? Yeah. Um, I, I actually cycle 99% of what I do. So, um, yes, if the dancers go horribly wrong, I'm in trouble. Um, but I try and help the dancers all the way so the dancers succeed, which means I can succeed. Um, I would never throw anything off the wall in without building up to it. Um, I help the dancers, so it helps me, because if I lose all the dancers, I'm in trouble. To um, <coughs> address directly what you were saying, um, the module comprises the formation, arrangement, sequence, and relationship. Um, and I'm hoping that you're understanding those terms, if I use those terms. But what I'm actually using, what I'm calling here, is just the F and the A, which is two parts of the module. Really, that was modular choreography. I didn't think about resolving. I, I never do. Um, I actually run my head backwards to resolve the square. Now, that won't make sense. But it's the way I do things. I, I call, the dan uh, call the figures, move the dancers around. Formation management is part of the site calling uh, pantheon. But in actuality, no, um, neither site calling nor module calling exists by itself. The two things are completely integrated. Now, you may have to spend a little more time if you need to memorize and write out everything you're going to call. You may have a different set of parameters to follow. But I'm working down this set, which are probably just as complicated. So it's really the same thing. And I'm, I'm not sure if you can see what I'm saying on that, but I promise you that there is the same sort of um, route to follow. It's just I do it a little differently by worrying about moving the dancers around effectively. And the resolution just kind of falls into the end. Now, I did, I did need to know at one stage we had a, a red couple and a blue couple, and that's why I was able to suddenly call original sides, California twirl, or, or whatever it was I called. I just had picked up on that without intending to. That was just lucky accident, but a serendipity. But another S word. Oh, gosh. Yes. But, <laughs> but in actuality, the formation arrangement, um, manipulation, formation management, it is what this is really uh, talking about here, and it should fit just as well with a module caller's uh, approach, in my opinion. Let's see, got here. Let me, let one, me one last okay. comment because we're now running out of time. Right. So we have one last comment. What I want to say is all of these callers have experience. Robert just said he, he goes and he helps. The reason Robert knows to help is 
Not because he's primarily a sight caller, he says. But he knows before the call leaves his lips. He knows what the end, expected end result will be. That's not sight calling. That's knowledge which is built by doing modules. So therefore, Robert knows what is going to be harder and knows how to help because he understands what he is doing to the dancers. The way you start that is by building modules and seeing what the dancers do and learning what the calls do for the dancers, and that will enable you to have the degree of control that these callers have shown. Thanks, Betty, because I think that's, yes. that's the really point. You have to work modules. You have to look at the calls, look how you can do calls, and this helps for variety. And to sum up, I think we, have, we talk about entertaining here in Las Vegas. So if we work for dancer success, Then we entertain the dancers, and I think this is what we keep in mind. I would like to thank Robert, Paul, all of you for coming. There are still handouts here. Thank you very much. Thank you.